And hello, I am standing in Thailand, Bangkok to be exact, and going to get my hair done right now. So I don't actually have a lot of time to speak prior to actually <laughs> really making a video and talking about my crazy journey through Japan to get to Thailand. But I am here and uh, I think the hair place, oh, it is super bright. Anyhow, I think the hair place is just right around the corner. I'll, uh, I'll check back in a moment. <laughs> All right, and welcome back. Sorry, that was a weird intro, I think. So I am here in Thailand, just got my hair done, and it's uh, super inexpensive. It was less than $100 for the cut and color. Kind of cool. Kind of bummed, I wanted purple or blue, and they weren't really willing to go that far. So it was like a lot of back and forth, took a lot of time, and I'm like, you know what? I just gave up and was like, all right, let's just go with this blonde auburn, I guess. It was what it was, a blonde auburn color. But anyhow, back to the main thing. I am here in Thailand right now, and it was quite the trip. We took off at midnight from San Francisco landed at 5 a.m. in Tokyo at Haneda and we had a six hour layover. Now the, the question there was, did we want to leave Haneda and go out to go see Tokyo or did we want to just chill in Haneda? And the lines to get through Haneda were crazy. So we just experimented going through the airport first we actually had to go through security again, uh, which that kind of sucked. So it ended up being, we should have just left the airport in all actuality, but since we got through and did all the security stuff and everything, we just hung out at the airport. And because of that, we ended up taking naps in like kind of, the airport's really well designed for being able to lie down and sleep if you have to. So we did that. When we woke up, I tested my uh, Passmo card or Suica card and went and bought something out of a vending machine and I have about 2,500 yen on the Suica card still, which is pretty awesome. So did that and then went to a uh, udon area inside of the airport. The airport had like no restaurants, which kind of sucked. It was funny how they were advertising it so heavily, but they are only advertising the domestic sides. Because we were on the international side, it was actually not that much to go out and eat. So after that, we got some udon and got onto our flight, came here down to Bangkok. Our cousin picked us up, which was super cool. And we went to her restaurant to go eat Thai food, the first meal for our journey here. And then uh, this morning, I woke up, went and got the hair done. And now we're chilling at this new place that is uh, called Kalpon, I believe, which is they do this new style of uh, Thai food. It's rice with wrapping uh, that wraps items on the inside and it's like baked but I'll uh, I'll come back in a second here after we uh, we take our quick snack and then we're gonna bounce out probably to another part of the area to try some more Thai food <laughs> surprise surprise back in a second all right and welcome back I was uh, I still am walking around Koreatown it's Kumbit Plaza here in Bangkok and the place is a lot larger than I thought it was going to be. It's three, four stories of Korean like shops inside of Thailand. And this is not quite what I saw on the show that I was thinking about. So I'm going to have to go check that out. But it's not bad. It's, it's quite nice. I found the restaurant that my cousin was talking about that he said that I should go eat at. I'll probably check that out when Lynn gets here. Um, the other thing that I could 
say is that uh, in the last scene, I was eating those uh, kind of like sticky rice with the filling and mom got the Heinie's chicken and the uh, durian flavor and both of them were fantastic, like super delicious. And then now, I was like, after we did that, mom did not want Korean food, so she wanted to go eat at uh, somewhere near the place we got our hair done. And I figured I could at least eat there, and if it was just meh, I could come here and eat lunch. But we're actually able to find all these Michelin gourmand places, which were super nice. And because of that, I was able to get, uh, what, cow soy noodle soup from like the Chiang Mai, Chiang Mai area. And then um, I was also able to try some Yenta Pho, which I haven't had in forever. And then, uh, what was that last? Oh, some weird soup, this like sweet and sour soup that had a ground beef or brown pork in it. That was really interesting. It was good. But it wasn't anything to, uh, all the food was good, but none of it was overly uh, done. So uh, after that, we came here and just walked around. So far, so good. We're probably gonna go to the park next, though. So, we'll uh, check back in a moment here. <laughs> All right, welcome back. I am in Terminal 21. Mom did not want to go to the park, and so I told her, let's come to this mall that Earth, my cousin, told me to come to and try seeing what they had here. Apparently, they're supposed to have some really good restaurants at a really cheap price. They definitely have some cheap prices. I'm not hungry, we just ate, so. That was one of those things where, because I'm not hungry, I'm not gonna buy anything to eat, but they do have quite a bit of food here. And not just on this floor, they actually have it on this floor, the fourth floor, and the sixth floor. And the big thing about Terminal 21 is that all of the floors are city themed. So, like we went to San Francisco, that was the, the sixth floor, that was the last floor with all the food on it. I think it was actually 4th, 5th, and 6th floor. And then, um, what? There was a Paris floor, a Tokyo floor, Istanbul floor, and each one of those floors actually had something that was kind of like related to what it was. So, meaning the decorations were either styled like Japan or like, uh, Istanbul, I mean, uh, I actually don't really know that area, so I couldn't really tell you. And then Paris was Parisian and San Francisco, they had like Pier 21 instead of Pier 39. They had the Fisherman's Wharf area. The whole market area was to look like, a, like you were at San Francisco or in San Francisco. And they did a really good job here recreating the look of making it look like you're in the city that you're supposed to be. I would say this is probably the only exception is the first floor right here that I'm on, or the ground floor I think they call it. There is like, there is no rhyme or reason to everything. And right now it's just a market and like convenience stores, bookstores, it's just a variety of things. Now, oh, although each floor is themed, the theme has nothing to do with the stores on the floor. So, the Tokyo floor, I don't have any photos because it was just all women's underwear. Like, there's no reason for me to walk around filming people buying underwear. But that's what it all was. It was just like all fashion in that sense. And then London, that was another floor that I went to. That floor was all styled to have like tech and toys. So that was actually really cool to walk around. But I think mom has a dinner party that she has to go to after this and I have to debate what I want to do after this because I got a bit of time. I was thinking too many things. There's too many things that I want to do and 
I don't know if I want to do it with the time that I have remaining. So we'll, uh, we'll check back in in a moment before uh, we figure out what I'm going to do. <laughs> All right, so I am at Benchikitty Park. Benchikitty? Benchikitty? I don't know, actually know how to say the name. I actually just know that that's how I read it when I was looking at the name. It was pretty funny. Um, but there, this park is like fantastic. I'm actually kind of on a boardwalk deal right there. I don't know how much you could actually see behind me, but it's all just uh, like water and land. And it's a ecological site where they're trying to have in the middle of the city some kind of green areas where everything is done naturally is what I read where they're like having bees pollinate everything and the fish and the and the whole ecological system is supposed to run itself now that being said there are different parts to this area like right over there behind me there is a skywalk and currently right now there are so many different things going on I literally just ran across uh, some sort of ambassador for some fashion brand she's doing a photo thing and touring thailand so she was here taking a few photos i kind of got stuck behind them and was like waiting and waiting and waiting because i didn't want to ruin their photos but they had like some government official walking them around saying like this is that and it's kind of where i got most of that information from because they were talking loud enough to where i could hear them but softly enough to where they're not disturbing anybody else i literally was just right behind them and then I finally got a chance to get in front of them because they were going on the skywalk and that's literally what I wanted to do was get onto the skywalk, so. Ugh, wanted to swap camera, or swap hands. And so, that being said, I was able to get in front of them and walk out towards the boardwalk area. I don't, again, I don't know what I'm actually walking on right now but it's just a path that's like right above the water. Now the water levels are a lot lower than in other photos that I've seen on this place. So I don't know if there's some sort of drought happening here cause the water at my cousin's house is like so high. <laughs> We're worried that it might flood into her, her portion of the housing. Another real cool thing here is that they put these observation posts there's benches underneath what I'm standing on, which is what I set the coffee cup to uh, change hands on the camera just now, but gives you just a little bit better of a view of what is going on. And there's actually another one right there behind me. Ugh, I can't see it on the screen. <laughs> it's too bright, but it's somewhere there. And it's kind of neat. There is a boat in the water right there. There you go. Right there. So. Um, I don't know what that's for. They don't do uh, rowboat things or anything along those lines. But my cousins were telling me that this park was really cool. That it was actually worth coming out and checking out. So here I am. Mom has to go to a party so we actually separated after the Terminal 21 deal. I'll probably bring Lynn to both here and Terminal 21. Terminal 21 was just that amazing. And the Siam Paragon wasn't that all that impressive to Mom. So, yeah, just been walking around. Oh, when you, I first entered this place, there was a huge, huge, like, lake or pond that went, like, along the complete side of this place. So, that was pretty impressive, and there was a ton of people doing exercise over there. That's actually kind of like, in order to enter this place, I had to pass that. There are tons of entrances here. That was just the one that I had to take in order to get to the park and yeah I'm actually kind of curious what I'm going to do next I looked up what time sunset was it's actually sunset's pretty late around these parts it's like six o'clock you know it's the middle of January so it's kind of nice we'll uh we'll see what's what though and uh I might just go meet up with mom at her party uh, to get more like, to get dinner rather more food but that might be nice um, and then I'll probably just continue walking around here for now until I figure out what's next, so 
check back in a moment. All right, and welcome back. Gonna go ahead and end this here. I finished up at Bencha Kitty Park and was walking back via the Skyway to the nearest train station, which I believe is Asok. And I realized I was there at dusk, so they actually lit everything up, which is pretty cool. And, oh, before I left, I think I didn't get to mention, I walked through this sports hall that they had. They had this whole hall set up for, for sports and stuff. It was really kind of creepy, actually. It was a warehouse that was hollowed out, and then in the middle of it, they kind of knocked down all the walls and put a, like, jungle gym type deal. But it was cool at the same time. <laughs> And then after going through that whole area and checking out all the different kind of like sports that they had in the area, I walked over to the mangrove section of the park, which mangrove in my mind was a little bit different. I think of like trees with like a bunch of legs that go into water. These were more like really tall lilies. I don't know. They called them mangroves though. So it is what it is. I walked uh, through that area um, and that's kind of where I just like sat down and tried to figure out what I was going to do next. And I realized that it was like a past six and sunset was about, I think like 6.08 or something like that. And so what happened in the end was I decided that I'd just come back to my cousin's restaurant and meet up with mom and her friends and have dinner here. Uh, I called first, and that's actually what pushed the decision because I was getting hungry. It was a little bit past six, and I still haven't had that Korean food that I was trying to get over at like the little Korea town. But I was just gonna go head back or head over to Terminal Twenty One again and eat there. But Mom said to come here and join her, so I did. And after a short train ride back. Uh, I was able to walk here from the train station, uh, no problem. And yeah, met with mom's friend, had a good time, dinner was great. And I think this is where I'm gonna end tonight's vlog. So, we'll see you in the morning.